Hey, what's going on everyone? I hope you're getting comfortable because this video is is extremely important. It's extremely important if you want your songs to sound uh, the best that they possibly can and if you want them to compete with other commercial records that are currently out there. Learning how to master your song is absolutely essential. Learning how to master it will improve and dramatically impact every song that you put out there. Now, I want to give a big shout out to um, Pro Sound Formula, which has helped me over the years to formulate my own mastering chain uh, through the seven step procedure that they've outlined. And I'll give you uh, the link to that seven step procedure on how to master a song to get it to sound the best that they possibly can, which will help you in turn create uh, those records that are, you know, loud in your face, fat without the cost of affecting the dynamic that uh, were retained during the mix session so in a in a simple sense let's get right into it there's seven steps that I've learned through you know working with other engineers taking in from other YouTube videos and learning the pro sound formula uh, that I've implemented uh, myself uh, obviously I play around with it a little more depending on the record uh, and each of the plugins that I'll use depending on which uh, sound that I want and I've uh, and I've you know, I've said this over and over again in a lot of other videos too. Um, every plugin is vital f in itself, and the sound that it produces, and the effects and the artifacts that'll uh, play and relish onto whichever sound recording that you're putting the plugin on. So, now there's seven steps, as I mentioned. The seven steps are one you have to prepare it is to get everything set up and ready for the mastering and I'll go through that second is to fix it that's step two is to fix any problems with the overall sound um, you know taking a look at the spectrum analyzer to look for problems etc uh, step three excuse me is to enhance it is to enhance it is using things like EQ and wideners etc step four is to compress it uh, to reduce the dynamic range of the overall track in order to add energy so you can make it louder step five is to clip it and soft clipping the audio peaks of a track in order to achieve the maximum loudness with minimal negative sound effects so you know just taking off the uh, little wings at the top just to make it louder um, limit it is to increase the overall value, uh, volume, sorry, or the level of the track as much as possible without clipping or losing quality. And then step seven is to reference the track that you've just mastered with the commercial sound in order to, um, in order to you know compare your master and see how it sounds in comparison to that, but also on a variety of different systems, you know your car, headphones, uh, and to get a better idea of what's working or not. So the song that you're producing, lastly, you want to reference it on systems and playback systems that you feel that that song would be most played on. So if it's a club song, you want to make sure you reference it on big loudspeakers that would usually be played in venues that that song would uh, be played on. And every song is listened to in the car. Uh, you also you always want to reference your record uh, within a car not just one maybe two three if you have access to those cars so I'm gonna open up a project and I'm gonna show you exactly um, how the project sounded prior to being mastered and then how it sounded after being mastered so this is the track that is actually being released in two days it's um, myself and an artist that I work with locally here called uh, named Darnell Michael He's an amazing uh, lyricist and amazing rapper um, and uh, let me show you exactly what the track sounded like before the mastering chain. So the mastering chain that I have is right over here on the mixing console. So I'll shut off all the plugins for the mastering chain and then you'll get to see exactly how it sounds. And then halfway through the songs, I'll turn it off, turn it back on, turn it on, turn it back off, etc. So you can get an understanding of exactly um, what a mastering chain and uh, what proper mastering can do, can do uh, for your song. Hey, got a few digits from a stripper named Anna. Pockets stay green like a mad Bruce Banner. Fuck your couch from my dirty boots on your sectional. Why you talking zeros when I'm asking about the decimal? Xanax in my pocket, told that bitch I got anxiety. Only rate my team so haters don't see eye to eye with me. Said that I'm the one, so why the fuck she gotta lie with me? Never with society, we fucking up propriety. Run up in your house with an all black track, black shades on and an all black ball cap. Niggas ringing for that top spot like a new cell, so I gotta hit that first place. 
face with a blue shell I'm Jet Li and DMX Cradle to the grave Chains on my neck Still like a young black slave Stash on my dresser Sit tight like a knick-knack High as fucking fuck around And catch it in your neck Back whole squad litty Ain't no pity in the city Dog my niggas are too gritty But you pussy smell the kitty Life too shitty Take that in now I'm sure that you clearly heard the difference between just the mixed uh, record and then the mastered record. It sounds fatter. It sounds more in your face. It sounds larger. It's uh, you know their dynamics are still retained. The drum and the the bass is pumping. Uh, the mid is soft and velvety, and the high end is uh, has a very nice sheen to it. Everything is there without impacting the quality and uh, the dynamics of the song. So let's go through uh, exactly the. Um, plugins that I used and the formula that I followed. Now, I didn't follow the step-to-step -step formula. However, I did follow it loosely. So you'll get an understanding of exactly um, what I did and exactly how I mastered um, this song. So now, what usually happens is if I'm sending it uh, out to somebody else to get it mastered, uh, you know, if I feel that I have a mastering engineer that uh, d works better on dance tracks and I want him to handle it. So what I'll do is I'll prepare it so I can send it out to them. I'll bounce out the sound. Uh, bounce, I'll bounce out the song. Uh, I'll export the mix session to a stereo uncompressed file, either uh, .wave or .aiff. Uh, minimum about 24-bit, 44.1 kilohertz or 24-bit, 96 kilohertz. Uh, ideal bit rate and sample rate. And then I'll send that over to the mastering engineer and then the mastering engineer can take care of that. Now, a lot of the sessions that I work on that I just mix and master in the box, since I do have a heavy-duty setup here, um, I don't have to worry that much about latency and I don't have to worry about uh, you know, my program crashing due to heavy usage. I master actually within um, the actual project itself after I'm done mixing. I'll master on the mix uh, on the master bus right here. One more thing is to make sure that the mix that you're sending out to them is hitting uh, no more than negative 12 to negative 9 decibels uh, at the max threshold. Uh, since you want to keep enough headroom uh, on the song for the mastering engineer to allow him or her uh, to do their uh, work on it without, you know, taking your waveform and clipping it or taking anything out that might be necessary. Uh, so the negative 9 to 12 uh, average threshold for the DB is enough to give the mastering engineer enough headroom to um, work with that record. And again, that goes for you too if you're mixing out a song or if you're working in the box. So the first thing that I'll do is I will take out uh, the unnecessary uh, low-end frequencies. So uh, general stated range of human hearing is anywhere from 20 to 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. So uh, ideally, there's no reason for us to have any of those frequencies present in the sound if nobody can hear it, right? I'll do a small high pass anywhere on the 30 hertz, and here's the before. Was when I'm asking about the decimal the Xanax in my pocket told that bitch I got anxiety Only rate my team so haters don't see eye to eye with me Said that I'm the one so why the fuck she gotta lie with me Never with society we fucking up her pop Very very hard to hear however you can notice a little bit of difference in the very low end uh, Where a little bit of it is dropped off it sounds a little cleaner So the second thing that I'll do is I'll put on the Fab Filter Saturn Now the Fab Filter Saturn is a saturation and distortion plugin what the saturation and distortion plugin uh, primarily does, it adds, you know, subtle, clean, or warm tube or tape saturation. Uh, there's a preset in here that I use called Magic Mastering. And what the Magic Mastering does, it adds a clean tube saturation to the song and it increases uh, the tonal quality and the dynamics of the song by adding a little bit of drive uh, to all the free, to the to, uh, to the whole spectrum. And this is how it sounds before, uh, adding the uh, saturation and distortion in, and uh, how it'll sound after. I run up in your house with an all black track, black shades on, and an all black ball cap. Niggas ringing for that top spot like a new cell, so I gotta hit that first place with a blue shell. I'm Jet Li and DMX, cradle to the grave, chains on my neck, still like a young black slave, stash on my dress. So if you notice a little bit of excitement uh, got introduced into the song, there's a little bit of, uh, you know, saturation that's present as well. So the next thing that I'll add right after the uh, 
saturation is actually another tape saturation plugin and I really like using this in conjunction with FF uh, Saturn is because it adds that analog warmth to digital recordings. Now the Waves J37, it's a tape saturation plugin. It's a precision model of the very machine used to record many of the greatest masterpieces in modern music. So it's an ad, so it's a digital representation of that J37. So this has various plugins that you can play around with. I like taking one of these plugins, you know, high frequency round bottom or mid frequency enhancer and this one fat tight and bottom because this is best represented of the hip hop track I was going for and from there I'll work with it and I'll mess around with it a little bit, uh, change around a few settings, work with the saturation, maybe take out the noise level to get rid of the uh, floor noise um, to make it more sound more contemporary and then I'll go from there. So this is what it sounds like before I put on the Secondary shape saturation. Just so sit tight like a neck mac. Highs fucking fuck around and catch it in your neck back. Whole squad lady ain't no pity in the city. Dog, my niggas are too gritty, but you pussy smell the kitty. Life too shitty. Your things ain't pretty. So right off the bat, you'll notice that the hi hats, right when I put on plugins, uh, the J37, the hi hats get a little more sheen to it. The mid range gets a little more uh, velvety, and the low end gets a little more aggressive it gets that a little bit of warmth coming from both those uh plugins so i love using these two in conjunction because i think they play off very well with each other um at least to my ears uh, and i'm sure you can hear that as well so once i've done tape saturation and i've added that analog warmth to the digital recordings um because again, digital recordings are very clean sound, especially the setup that I use. I use a Duet Apogee 2, so everything that I put in through the microphone and for the vocals is very clean. There's no warmth being added, and I, uh, myself, I like adding all that warmth uh, digitally afterwards by plugins that are representative of those analog uh, of the analog warmth from specific devices such as the G37. So the next thing that I do after putting on tape saturation, I'll throw on another EQ and this EQ uh, will increase the high end to add again as I mentioned the sheen and to increase it a little bit on the hi-hats and any instruments that are uh, represented within that frequency spectrum. So let's hear the difference. Menace on the block, we fuck around and take your biddies. You know we the menace of the night Things wanna get down so low If she wanna get it, I just might Hop up in the bim and swerve out slow You know we the menace of the night So that little bit of high end brought out uh, that extra shine that I wanted for the song. So once I've done that, I feel like uh, there's still something lacking in the deep end. Because I still feel like... Um, the bass isn't as punchy or the bass isn't as uh, vibrant and the bass isn't as pronounced that it should be. Uh, and Waves has an amazing plugin that a lot of people don't really look to using uh, on a mastering chain. However, I love using it because uh, it helps pronounce the bass a lot more. So you'll hear exactly what I mean by that. Uh, so this is before the max bass. Hey. Got a few digits from a stripper after. named Anna. Pockets stay green like a mad Bruce Banner. Ooh. Fuck your couch from my dirty boots on your sectional. Why you talking zeros when I'm asking about the decimal? The decimal. Xanax in my pocket told that bitch I got anxiety. Only rate my team so haters don't see eye to eye with me. Said that I'm the one so why the fuck she got a lie? So you'll notice the kick drums got a little more um, heavier. Uh, that bass line in the back got a little more pronounced. So play around with the plugins and you'll, you'll find that... Uh, these plugins really help me shape records from what otherwise might have been thin, weak records into these uh, pronounced fat in your face uh, songs and projects. I like how it's sounding right now. What we want to do next is we want to compress it step four, which is, you know, it's to reducing the dynamic range of the overall track in order to add the energy. And a great compressor that I like to use on my mastering chain is the SSL compressor by Waves. Play around with the compressor. Uh, in my last video, I went over exactly what the general understanding of what a compressor does. Um, you know, if you're mastering your own song by this point, I really hope you know what a compressor does and how it can benefit you and the records and the songs that you're working with. So now try a compressor to hear whether it improves the overall sound. And if it doesn't, remove it and move on. Now, every plugin in this step is to add and make the record sound better than it actually, than it uh, not actually is, than it currently is. So if something is there and it's making it sound 
not as good as you want it to sound or making it sound worse off than it was before, take it off and move on to the next step. This is just a general rule of what you should be following, what you should be doing to get your songs to master, to sound as comparatively as good or as fat as these commercial sounds. So, you know, the general rule of using a master, uh, using a compressor on a mastering chain is to use a low ratio. Avoid compressing too much. You know, start with a ratio around 1.5, um, excuse me, two, uh, 2 to 1. I, however, did not follow that ratio. I did straight to 4 to 1. I felt like it was sounding better to my ear if I was using a higher ratio. However, the general rule is to keep it lower. Again, every rule is there to be a guideline if it sounds better in a different way. By all means, do it a different way. It is art in the end. So, you know, you want to aim for around two decibels of gain reduction and no more than four decibels, as you can see. Uh, the needle here is not poking anything higher than four decibels when I play it. Hey, got a few digits from a stripper named Anna. Pocket steak. And this is what it sounded like before. Green like a mad Bruce Banner. Fuck your couch with my dirty boots on your sectional. Why you talking zeros when I'm asking about the decimal? It's annex in my pocket, told that bitch I got anxiety. Only rate my team so haters don't see eye to eye with me. Said that I'm the one, so why the fuck she got a... So after I've added on the SSL compressor, the next step that I did was I actually added a multi-band compressor. Now, what the multiband compressor it allows you to do is it compresses different frequency ranges separately, as I mentioned in the last video for uh, comp for mixing vocals, and it allows you to have more control over the spectrum. So, the multiband compressor that I used for this track was the uh, linear phase multiband by Waves, which I like using because it allows me to have a uh, more control, more control over the different frequency ranges. Um, and it's a very powerful tool for me to allow to compress different frequency ranges uh, separately from each other. So what I mean by that is now if I open up the linear phase multiband by waves is each different frequency range. So this, 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 and this are five different frequency ranges from low end all the way to the high end. And I want to compress them differently, primarily because the maximum level of volume each frequency range hits is going to be different no matter what. I'll take a listen to it and I'll let the uh, multiband compressor get the maximum uh, level for each frequency range. And then I'll work with each frequency range and compress it to that threshold. Hey. Right, so if I turn this on. Hey, got a few digits from a stripper named Anna. Pockets stay green like a mad Bruce Banner. Fuck your couch from my dirty boots on your sectional. Why you talking zeros when I? All right, so now what this indicates to me that this frequency range right here, the maximum, it's negative eight, and then so on and so forth. So I want to compress and make that threshold relative to each of the maximum. Uh, that the frequency ranges are hitting uh, so I don't over compress anything else. Once I've done that, now I can start reducing the threshold even more to get these frequencies to compress more. So all of these are being compressed separately. Now, if I want to compress this a little more than this, I can obviously just take this and push it up or down. Um, if I want to do anything else with the other frequency ranges, of course, I can work with that as well. And then so on and so forth. Mess around with it, see what sounds good to your ear. And then we can go from there. Now, once the compression is done and you're happy with how it sounds uh, and how the dynamic range sounds and the energy that you've added into it through the compression stage, the next thing that you want to do is you want to clip it. The technique known as soft clipping is to increase the level of a track uh, with minimal side effects. You know, whereas compression is limiting and squashing the peaks down. So soft clipping is simply just chopping them off. Uh, what the clipping here does is, you'll notice by this uh, gain reduction bar here, how much is being clipped off. So this is how it sounds before I clip off the tops. Anna, pockets Anna. stay green like a mad Bruce. And this is how it'll sound after I put on the clipper. Bruce Banner, fuck your couch with my dirty boots on your sectional. Why you talking zeros when I'm asking about the decimal? It's annex in my pocket, told that bitch I got anxiety. Only rate my team so haters don't see eye to eye with me. Said that I'm the one, so why the fuck she gotta lie with me? Never with society, we fucking up propriety. And the last step in actually the mastering chain is to put in a limiter. Now, to put in a limiter is the goal is to increase the overall level of the track as much as possible. 
without clipping it or losing quality again you notice that the last like four four three or four steps has just been increasing the volume little by little by different stages and different uh, ways of doing it now what I like to use is the Fab Filter Pro Limiter. The Fab Filter Pro Limiter has a lot of different presets that you can work with and give you a starting point to get it sounding something close to how you want it to sound like. And it's pretty much general. A limiter is, you know, increasing the level as much as you can and it'll show you a graphic representation of what it'll sound like. So this is what it sounds like before I put on the limiter. Hey. Got a few digits from a stripper named Anna. Pockets stay green like a mad Bruce Banner. Fuck your couch from And this is what it sounds like after I put on the limiter. To my dirty boots on your sectional. Why you talking zeros when I'm asking about the decimal? Xanax in my pocket told that bitch I got anxiety. Only rate my team so haters don't see eye to eye with me. So if you take a look at this right here, you see these chopped off edges? That's what the soft clipper did. Right? And uh, if I had this down to zero, said that I'm the one, so why the fuck she gotta lie with me? Now so these are all what the soft clipper clipped off the top, and I wanna make this as loud as possible. So what I'll do is I'll keep increasing the game. Never with society, we fucking up propriety. Run up in your house with a all black track, black shades on, and an all black ball cap. Niggas ringing for that top spot like a new cell. So I gotta hit that first place with a blue shell. I'm Jet Li and DMX, cradle to the grave. Chains on my neck, still like a young black slave. Stash on my dress, a sit tight. Now, once I've completed the limiting, what I like doing is I like going back and working on the stereo image. I didn't feel like this track is wide enough. So if you take a listen to it again. Tight like a knick-knack. High as fucking fuck around and catch it in your neck back. Whole squad lady ain't no pity in this. Now, working with the stereo image is really important because it gives that 360 and that wide feel to the whole record. Now, using a mid-side EQ is how I accomplish that. It can be very useful in the mastering process because what a mid-side EQ pretty much does, it splits the stereo signal into a mid and a side channel. Now, the mid is all the mono information, that is to say everything which is identical in the left and right speaker, and the side channel is the opposite. It contains any information which is, um, which is different between the left and the right speaker, right? It's a little confusing, so I do suggest going and reading a little more about it. Uh, I'll try to put as many links as I can to give you a little more information which you can go more in depth and read about it. Now, the mid-side EQ that I like working with is the Sheps. Uh, again, if you go all the way back up to step four, this is in the under the enhanced formula portion of uh, the Pro Sounds formula is when I like adding it. But I like adding it to the end because once I have the final product, then I can mess around with the stereo image of it and make it more wider. That's just how I like working. That's my workflow. I want to show you exactly what these two are doing uh, in terms of the stereo image and what you're hearing. I'll turn one of them down and I'll turn the other one up and vice versa so you can hear exactly what the processing is doing to the sound. This is classic. Hey. Got a few digits from a stripper named Anna. Pockets stay green like a mad Bruce Banner. Fuck your couch with my dirty boots on your sectional. Why you talking zeros when I'm asking about the decimal? The Xanax in my pocket told that bitch I got anxiety. Only rate my team so haters don't see eye to eye. This is what it sounds like with it off. Hey. Got a few digits from a stripper named Anna. Pockets stay green like a mad Bruce Banner. Fuck your couch with my dirty boots on your sectional. Why and this is what it sounds like with it on. Why you talking zeros when I'm asking about the decimal? The Xanax in my pocket told that bitch I got anxiety. Only rate my team so haters don't see eye to eye with me. Said that I'm the one, so why the fuck she gotta lie with me? Never with society, we fucking up propriety. Run up in your house with an all black track. So that's pretty much it. Um. This was a really quick rundown of how I follow that specific pro sounds formula to uh, master my songs or master my client songs that come in. But yeah, so again, let's listen to it without everything on it, just the mix. Black, black shades on and an all black ball cap. Niggas ringing for that top spot like a new cell. So I gotta hit that first place with a blue shell. I'm Jet Li and DMX cradle to the grave. Chains on my neck still like a young black slave. Stash on my dress, I sit tight like a knick-knack High as fuck, fuck around and catch it in your neck back Whole squad, lady, ain't no pity in the city Dog, my niggas are too gritty, but you pussy smell the kitty Life too shitty, your tings ain't pretty Menace on the block, fuck around and take your bitty You know we the menace of the night Things wanna get down so low If she wanna get it, I just might Hop up in the bim and swerve out slow You know we the menace of the night Things wanna get down so low If she wanna get it, I just might Hop up in the 
I hope you guys have learned something. I know these uh, tutorials are a very quick rundown of exactly what I do to, you know, whether produce songs or, uh, or what I do to uh, mix vocals or how I master projects. Um, obviously, you know, me going more into depth in exactly what I do to certain plugins and how I utilize them in certain knobs that I move around or the attack and the release on compressors, etc. There's so much variety and there's so much uh, range to just one different plugin that I'll use on a mastering chain uh, that it gets really hard to kind of go in depth and explain exactly what I do and how I do it and why I do it. So these uh, videos are generally to give you an understanding of uh, what rules I follow and uh, how I go about it in my own creative uh, way to mess around with it and get it uh, and utilize these formulas such as the mastering formula uh, to the records that I'm working on to get them to sound the best that they possibly can right so again I hope you guys have learned something uh, if you guys liked it please do leave a comment and let me know please do like the video and share it with anybody else you feel my benefit from this uh, again the links that I mentioned and I promised you are going to be somewhere in the description box below and uh, if you have any other questions or if you have anything that's unclear to you in the video do shoot me a message or leave a comment below and I'll be more than happy to get back to you uh, as soon as possible but for now I'll see you guys next time and I hope you guys learned something take care Hey, got a few digits from a stripper named Anna. Pockets stay green like a mad Bruce Banner. Fuck your couch with my dirty boots on your sectional. Why you talking zeros when I'm asking about the decimal? Xanax in my pocket, told that bitch I got anxiety. Only rate my team so haters don't see eye to eye with me. Said that I'm the one, so why the fuck she gotta lie with me? Never with society, we fucking up propriety. Run up in your house with an all black track, black shades on, and an all black ball cap. Niggas ringing for that top spot like a new cell, so I gotta hit that first place. With a blue shell, I'm Jet Li and DMX Cradle to the grave, chains on my neck Still like a young black slave Stash on my dresser, sit tight like a knick-knack High as fucking fuck around and catch it in your neck back Whole squad litty, ain't no pity in the city Dog, my niggas are too gritty, but you pussy smell the kitty Life too shitty, your tings ain't pretty Menace on the block, we fuck around and take your bitties You know we the menace of the night Things wanna get down so low If she wanna get it, I just might Hop up in the bim and swerve out slow You know we the man is in the night Ay. Things wanna get down so low If she wanna get it, I just might